Okay. Did that answer that? No. Oh, Let's mm, go back. Yeah, rewind. How much phosphorus is too much phosphorus? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I get to the phosphorus game. Um, so university, I, I think, came out. They bumped it up to 35 parts per million. Um, I've per, My personal um, experience is I really like how soils start cycling, and they feel like they're – they smell healthier, stuff cycling well. If we get to that 40 ppm to 50 ppm, um, that's Bray 1. Now, with that being said, those high of numbers is because of manure, getting it there. Like trying to do a map application, I, I just don't – you'd break the bank trying to get to those levels. I've tried. Yeah, so <laughs> I get I get to the part of – let's just say you're at 25 ppm. Yeah. Or – if I see 25 ppm and we're not doing manure, I feel very comfortable doing a inferral and having enough foss. Okay. That's it. Sure. Now, if we get down to 20, okay, if they're going to be going off with a dry rig anyway, we'll throw some map to help compensate. Okay. Um, or if I see 12, if we're ban- if we're doing strip till, we'll put 10340 um, with humic, with live zinc in the strip. Got it. Uh, to help compensate there. But where is too high? I think once you get above 50, it's not like the phosphorus is too high for what could happen. The phosphorus is too high based on the other nutrients that are influenced with phosphorus. Okay. Like the ratio, manure is great, but one of the downfalls is they've been eating hay, they've been eating corn that may not have had the perfect ratio. So how do we expect a cow's manure to have the perfect ratio? Sure. It's not going to happen. So when we're utilizing manure there, it's just understanding what the micros are doing as well Mm. to compensate for it. So he talked about zinc being a 10 to 1 using zinc sulfate. Love it. I love zinc sulfate. Anything in a sulfate form when it comes to a micro is usually the fastest releasing. Okay. When it comes to a, um, a dry. Sure. Now, when you're getting to, like, infero, uh, foliar feeding zinc, um, I really like to watch chelations here. I really like the studies on amino acid-based chelation uh, and carbon-based chelations, uh, getting it into the plant. Um, I've had really good luck on raising zinc levels with EDTA chelation for infero. Um, but there's even, I mean... You talk to many different people on EDTA, and there's a lot of mixed feelings about that element. I just don't think there's been enough studies of clear-cut. This is what it does. EDTA is easy, isn't it? Is, Am I thinking that right? That's like an easy, an easy chelation of, of, of nutrients. It key, it's a really good chelator. It is, okay. Like, it, it's a claw. That's where chelation comes from, and it's there. Got it. The, the problem is what some... Some people uh, will talk about is with that EDTA, number one, when it releases that nutrient, does it tie up something else? Mm. And or that EDTA going through the plant, does it stop the use of certain elements? Got it. It's some of the thoughts there. Sure. Um, like I said, I just don't think there's enough research to really have a clear answer. Um, and then also a lot, of the, a lot of micronutrients are EDTA chelated. And the reason I feel like, number one, is because it's proven that it chelates. But number two, it's usually very easy to mix with user-friendly it's very user-friendly and i would say if you're gonna start dabbling into micros i would start with an infero sure at the end of the day when you're starting biologicals micronutrients all these little i don't even want to call them regions these science-based um efficiency gainers per se sure you'll get your biggest bang for your buck doing it around the seed Mm. because you're going to be able to influence it a lot earlier there than you can anywhere else. Have you seen, so uh, a seed company I work with, they have a seed treatment that's a micro nutri- micro treatment that's applied to the seed. Um, and in all their testing, it they it's a, I think it's a four to seven bushel increase on, I want to say 80% of their testing over the last three or four years. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, I mean, according to the field testing, it's positive. Yep. Um, now, I assume that's put on as a liquid, as all tr- most treatments are. It's run through the system and then dried and goes in the, in the pro boxes or the bags. Um, do you think that's too close? I mean, we see a result. No? No. I, I, so micronutrients is what I, I see 
micronutrients as keys. Okay. Little car keys or house keys, whatever you want. Sure. And the key that they have is the open door to macros, your macronutrients. Okay. So when it comes to phosphorus and zinc, mm-hmm. zinc has the keys to open, open the phosphorus house for the plant. Interesting. Manganese has the keys to help with potassium. Okay. Also has a, it also helps nitrogen. Okay. I mean, there's different parts of the thing. Sure. And, and I, I don't want to generalize saying zinc's only for this. That's not how it works. Is it Moeller's chart? No, yeah, we can talk. That's that's another podcast. Yes. <laughs> but but it goes to the point. There are relationships, right? Yes. But to just very layman's terms of like why number one, the fastest way to get that influence is gonna be as close to the seed. Okay. When it comes to even even like biologicals. Like biological seed treatments, I, I actually think it's probably the most economical way to trial stuff. Okay. Um stuff in season, you're just asking a product to do a lot because mm-hmm. there's a lot of mother nature's factors that have already occurred. Absolutely. You know, when you, when you have that seed and it takes its first drink and it has that association with biology with that first drink. Yeah. And if it has micronutrients, it takes its first drink says, I got these micronutrients. I have these keys to help unlock these things. Mm. You're just starting the foundation. Yeah. So, um, that's, 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 that's solid. That's heavy. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major podcast platforms. Um, We're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.